أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قال رب اغفر لي وهب لي ملكا لا ينبغي لأحد من بعدي إنك أنت الوهاب رب الشح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي فالحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم أما بعد Once again everyone, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh uh, One of the things that the Quran did for me um, in my own journey and it continues to do for me is it continues to shape the way I think about reality uh, Allah's comments a lot of times they uh, change my attitudes towards things that I thought I knew You know one of the things about one of the most remarkable statements in the Quran about reflecting deeply on the Quran is um, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Don't they reflect deeply on the Qur'an or is it the case that the hearts have their own locks placed on them? And that is, an, is a very profound statement. Why would Allah say that why, the, the reason they don't reflect on the Qur'an is their hearts have their own locks placed on them? It has many things, many meanings. One of them I want to share with you is that sometimes you have a preconceived notion. You've already made up your mind what the ayah means or you've already made up your mind as to what is permissible and what is not permissible. You've already made up your mind as to how to think about something and how to think, not think about something. Maybe it came from your culture, maybe it came from your background, maybe it came from the lectures you heard or something, right? And you, it became a part of you. And that's just how you think. The Quran is forcing you, when it reflects, to unlock everything you have in your heart. Let Allah dictate what your conclusion should be. They cannot be dictated by anything else. And so there are people who when they, and I've seen this happen, you're trying to study the book of Allah. You're trying to learn the meaning of the ayah. And they say, well, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. We learned that this means this. Or we learned that it's X. But the ayah is saying Y. It's not saying X. No, but that doesn't matter because we already learned that it's X. So you can't question that anymore. I, one of my mentors, Dr. Akram Nadwi, was telling me one time that he was discussing, by the way, we do this with Quran, we do this with Hadith. And when people are ready to do this with Hadith, then Quran is easy step. So he said he was talking to a number of ulama, these are scholars. And they were discussing some issue and he said, well, what about this Hadith? And the scholar said, well, no, 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 actually, no, it's, I know that's a Hadith, but, you know, the, the fatwa remains. And then the, the shaykh quoted one of the other scholars that they look up to. And as soon as they quoted that other scholar, everybody said, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, that makes sense. And he said, wait, when I told you the hadith on the same subject, you all had a counter. But when I told you the scholar said it, all of you just immediately agreed. Nobody had a problem. There's the respect for scholars, you know, but you know why we respect our scholars? Because they did their best to understand the book. And they did their best to understand the sunnah. But when they gave us their answers, let me tell you something. You know, in mathematics, uh, like in calculus, you can have a four-page set of calculations, and at the end, there's an answer. Right? And that answer, for everybody else, they just care about the answer. For a student, what do they care about? How do they get to this, how do they get to this answer? What was their process? What was their process? We need to understand the process. The thing with Muslims became, we became too interested in the answer. We lost interest in what? The process. Don't tell me the details, just tell me what the answer is. Now the thing is, sometimes, is it possible that even a teacher missed a little bit? Or they didn't consider everything? So they gave you the answer, but maybe the, the answer should be revisited. Does that happen? Yeah. Yeah. And as students, it's our job to actually understand not only the answer, but understand the process. To understand the process. And it became so bad in the Ummah that when you ask someone, well, what was their process when they came at this conclusion? They get offended. Who are you to ask the process? Are you a scholar? Are you supposed, you have a right to ask? No, 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 no. This Ummah has actually always been transparent. Our ulama, even among each other, were always transparent. Nobody ever said, who are you to ask me? What are your qualifications? And when that transparency starts going away, the respect for scholarship starts going away. As a matter of fact, our scholarship maintained a high level of respect because they were transparent. 
Not because they felt like they don't have to give any answers or explanations. It was the exact opposite. And now people think if we maintain that and we never question them, that is the only way we can maintain their respect. It's actually the opposite. Society as a large starts losing respect for these people. They say these people think they know everything, they don't want to explain anything, we're all dumb. And the majority of society moves away from ulama. Anyway, I said that as a, an introductory thing, but what I really wanted to talk to you about is one dua that changed my attitude about a lot of things. And it's something that I, it affected me and affects, I think, a lot of people. So I travel and I meet young people and they say, Ustad, I'm studying engineering. I feel really bad. Why do you feel bad? Because I'm studying engineering. It's dunya, you know, I'm studying dunya. Make dua that my parents don't make me study engineering so I can go study deen. Because I don't want to, I, want, I don't want dunya, I want deen. Somebody else is going to start, I have a job. I feel so bad. Why do you feel bad? Because I'm an accountant. Well, okay, then you should feel bad. No, but anyway. <laughs> but they'll say, you know, because all I do is, you know, do, I file the taxes for this company or do the, do the books and this and that. And I, I spend nine hours a day doing that, but I only spend one hour of day reading Quran. Or I don't spend a little bit of time in the masjid, but I spend most of my day working. I feel terrible. I'm like, what do you think farmers do? They do a lot more hours than you do. What do you think other people of other, like, what does Allah want from us? To leave our occupations and recite Quran all day? You know, some people have that attitude. If I was only studying deen all day, then I would be a good person. You know? And if I'm doing other things, then I'm not a good person. If I'm earning a living, I'm running a business, I'm going to college, then I'm not a good person. SubhanAllah, this is so off. It's so far from the view Allah paint, the, the picture Allah paints in the Quran. I can't even begin to describe. Why would this book want to keep you inside a library or inside a university or inside a masjid all day and all night when this book is saying, go look at the sky. قُلْ سِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ Go travel in the land. If you want to know the tafsir of go travel in the land, it's not going to be from Ibn Kathir or Qurtubi or Ibn Ashur rahimahumullah. Where are you going to get the tafsir of go travel in the land? By going and traveling in the land. Where are you going to get the tafsir of, you know, أَفَلَمْ يَنظُرُوا إِلَى طَيْرِ فَوْقَهُمْ صَافَاتٍ وَيَقْبِدْنَا Didn't they look at the bird above them, spreading its wings and collapsing them? It's not going to be a grammatical analysis that tells you what that ayah means. What is it going to be? You going out and watching birds spread their wings and saying, whoa. Allah wants you to experience life. Here's what he tells you in this book. You come back to this book, it pushes you out in the world. Then the world outside pushes you back into the book. Then, you, then it pushes you back in the world. You keep going between the ayat of creation and the ayat of revelation. That's the process of the Quran. So one of these ayat that is so epic is the dua of Sulaiman alayhi salam. Sulaiman alayhi salam, you know, when, when prophets make dua, they make dua for akhirah. They make dua for forgiveness. Yeah? They make dua for their future generations, isn't it? Listen to this dua. Qala Rabbi ghfirli. He said, Master, forgive me. Wahabli mulkan. And give me the gift of kingdom. Give me, give me the gift of some kind of kingdom. Mulkan. La yambaghi li ahadim min ba'di. That is not even appropriate for anyone who comes after me. <laughs> give me so much kingdom that it's not even appropriate for any human being that comes after me to have that kind of kingdom. Innaka antal wahab. You are the one who continuously gives gifts. What is Sulaiman alayhi salam asking for? First thing, forgive me. Second thing, which is what shocked me, I was like, whoa, wh what? He asked for kingdom. Okay, that's deen or dunya, by the way, by our standards. It sounds like dunya, isn't it? And not just dunya. Don't just give me and give other people. He didn't just say that. He said what? Give me so much and give me something that is not even fitting for anybody else. Make me unique in what you give me. In where? In dunya. How in the world is this appropriate? It sounds like he's asking only for dunya. The beauty of this dua, number one, is his top priority. Ya Rab, forgive me. If you understand, Ya Rab, forgive me, then everything else about this dua will make sense. If you don't understand, Ya Rab, forgive me, you will not understand what the rest of this dua is. A human being can only do so much in this life. 
We can't, I can't, I can't I'm only going to live so many years. Then I'm going to be leaving this earth, whether I like it or not. My date is done. My time is done. The angel shows up. The appointment is there. It can't be delayed. The only thing that lives after me is what? As far as my akhirah is concerned and my forgiveness is concerned, I can make astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Uh, you know, I can make tawbah to Allah. I can cry before Allah only so many years, only so many times. But what can help me earn Allah's forgiveness even after I die? It's called sadaqah jariyah, isn't it? Something good you leave behind. The hadith will tell us your sadaqah jariyah could be your money. One of the most beautiful forms of sadaqah jariyah is what? Your children, they do good deeds after you, yes? Allah has given different people different blessings. Some people have money, they don't have children. Some people have children and they don't have money. But al-malu wal banuna zinatul hayat dunya Money is a part of the beauty of this life. Children are a part of the beauty of this life, isn't it? Now Allah gives certain people certain capabilities and other people other capabilities. If you study the prophets in the Quran, they don't all have the same talents. They have different personalities and they have different special skills. They have different highlights. The thing about Sulaiman alayhi salam, his special ability is governance. He knows how to govern. He knows how to take control. He knows how to even control the rebellion of who? Of jinn. He can even do that. So he has an unusual capability of government and controlling resources and making things, putting things to service. Now, is that a common quality or a very rare quality? The more power you get in government, the more corruption you get. Okay? The more absolute authority you have, the more absolute problems you have. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. So one of the greatest kingdoms in human history is the pharaohs. Case in point. You know? Now, Dawud, Suleiman is in a unique position. He has kingdom and he knows how to use it for good. What kind of sadaqah jariyah can he leave behind? Unmatched. He sees an opportunity for his akhirah to be reconciled by the talent that Allah has given him. And the talent Allah has given him is remarkable. He had an incredible, incredible kingdom. An incredible control. Incredible stability in his, in his land. Over human beings and over jinn. So he says, Ya Allah, expand this territory for me. Give me kingdom above and beyond this. Like, you've never, like you will never give to anybody else after me. Because I know what Allah has given me. And by the way, you should understand something else about Sulaiman alayhi salam from the Quran's perspective. Sulaiman alayhi salam is the son of who? You know? Dawud alayhi salam. You should know something special about Dawud alayhi salam. There's a hadith about Dawud alayhi salam. Adam alayhi salam was shown the names of every single human being. When we were ruh, Adam alayhi salam was shown, introduced to all of us. He knows my name, he knows your name. وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا ثُمَّ عَرَضَ هُمْ عَرَضَ هُمْ That's actually going back to the names of all individuals. Which is amazing. Our father knows all of us by name. It's not just we know his name, he knows our name too. And he knows our qualities too. Because in Arabic, ism is also qualities. So he knows you and your personality. How many people are in front of him? Adam alayhi salam? Unimaginable, yeah? And he picks out one of them. He says, who's that? That's your son Dawood. Give him 40 of my years. Make his life longer. Who did he pick out of all of them? You know what's amazing in the Quran? The word Khalifa only comes twice. It only comes for Adam and it comes for Dawood. That's it. It doesn't come for anybody else. Quran is answering the question that arises from that hadith. The hadith says that Adam alayhi salam did not pick Ibrahim alayhi salam, didn't pick Nuh alayhi salam, didn't pick Rasulullah alayhi salam, didn't pick anybody else. He picked who? Dawood. Why? Because he sees something in him that he has in common. What is that? Allah has made Adam alayhi salam khalifa on the earth. And Allah made Dawood alayhi salam khalifa on the earth. Ya Dawood, inna ja'alna ka khalifatan fil ardi. Dawood alayhi salam is special. Now, Dawood alayhi salam himself is khalifa, but who's his son? So Sulaiman alayhi salam is not just a prophet, he's also the son of a prophet, but a son of a special prophet, a prophet who was a Khalifa, a great ruler, a governor at the same time. And so his upbringing gives him knowledge of revelation, but also knowledge of how to live by that revelation, not only at the level of an individual and a family and a community, but at the level of entire governance. 
He's been brought up in that system. Even before, even as a child, he's been brought up in that system, right? And eventually Allah grants him prophethood. So he realizes the value of leaving a legacy behind. He's learned that from his father. And so he understands that he's going to die, but his legacy should live on. The legacy of good that he creates should live on. And Ya Allah, give me something that doesn't even... Because he knows his children are not going to get it the same way. He, he got it from his dad. لا ينبغي لي أحد من بعدي. Now, what does that mean for you and me? You know, some people, they can't handle fame. Some people can't handle money. Some people can't handle a compliment. I've met people who say when I'm making salah and somebody passes by, it messes me up. Now they think I'm a righteous person. Other people, they could be anywhere and they're praying and they don't care. The universe doesn't exist for them, right? So some people have a stronger, thicker skin. Some people have weaker skin. Different people have different weaknesses. Some people have a hard time waking up early in the morning. Does that happen? Other people have a hard time with other things. Like, for example, one of the gifts of Allah to me, may Allah keep it this way, one of the gifts of Allah to me is fame doesn't bother me and it doesn't make me happy. I'm not bothered by it and I'm not happy because of it. It's just something Allah gave me. I just have to use it to do something good. And that's it. It's nothing. If, if, if I was teaching this class and there was one table of students or there's like, I can't count how many tables of students, it won't matter. I'm still going to teach what I'm going to teach. It doesn't matter. If the camera's on or not on, it doesn't matter. That's the, the, way, it's the way I'm programmed. Alhamdulillah. Other things bother me. I won't tell you those. Other things, I have lots of weaknesses. You talk to my family about those. You know? But this is not, Alhamdulillah, this is not one of my weaknesses. You know, for other, I've met other people for whom this is a big weakness. It's a big problem. So the first thing you have to recognize is what is your weakness and what is your strength. And once you find your strength, then you ask Allah to give you and give you and give you in what you have strength so you can put all of it to the service of Allah's deen. So you can leave a legacy. Ya Allah, if this is not going to mess me up, then give me more of it. Because I can put it to work for your deen. Like Uthman radiallahu anhu should be asking for more wealth. He should ask. You know why? Because even after being a millionaire, does the wealth mess, with, mess him up? No. Someone like a Qarun should not ask for more wealth. Because whatever he has has messed him up enough already. You understand? So not everybody's going to ask for the same thing. Because the strength of Sulaiman alayhi salam is he has power, but it doesn't corrupt him. He has power, but it doesn't corrupt him. So he asks Allah, give me more and more and more and more and more of power so I can take all of it and serve what? Your deen. And when you ask Allah, what did Allah do for him? Look at it in the next ayah. فَسَخَّرْنَا لَهُ الرِّيحَ تَجْرِي بِأَمْرِهِ رُخَاءً حَيْثُ أَصَابٍ وَالشَّيَاطِينَ كُلَّ بَنَّاءٍ وَغَوَّاسٍ وَآخَرِينَ مُقَرَّدِينَ فِي الْأَصْفَادِ هَذَا عَطَاؤُنَا I made the, the winds submit to him. I made shayateen do work for him. Others I made dive deep into the ocean for him and pull out its treasures. Others I put, put in chains in prison, the ones who wouldn't listen to him. I put them in chains for him. This is all what we give. This is what we give. Allah gave him control over winds. You can have the most technologically advanced society with the greatest military, but when a hurricane strikes, their buildings fall. They can't protect themselves from what? The wind. They can't. They can't protect themselves from the earthquake. They can't protect themselves from the flood. Isn't it? They could have billions of dollars spent in defense and they can't protect from the wind. Allah Azza wa Jal gave Sulaiman alayhi salam, who needs a military when you, can ha when you have the wind? Just send a hurricane that way. Send a storm that way. <laughs> SubhanAllah. This is what Allah will give. So for you and me, identifying what our strength is and then making a pledge to Allah that we will use it for the, for the strengthening of this deen, for leaving a legacy that is longer than our own, that is perfectly normal. It's perfectly normal. That's not asking for dunya. As a matter of fact, even if you benefit from it somewhat, it's fine. Because you, you take from it what you need and you give from it what will build your akhirah. Because what was the priority from the very beginning? Rabbi, Forgive me. This is all in hopes of earning Allah's forgiveness. No matter how many good deeds I do, they're not going to be enough. So I keep doing good deeds even after I'm dead. That's what I want to do. Every one of you should be thinking like that. Every one of you. What is the strength Allah has given me? And how can I put it to good use? And how can Allah build my talent to make, me, make it even better? 
so I can benefit even more. May Allah Azza wa make us people of benefit and help us understand the beautiful and the perfect word of, word of His. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you benefited. I'd like to encourage you to actually embark on a comprehensive journey into the Qur'an. I've done a video translation and explanation of the entire Qur'an. It's called Qur'an cover to cover. I'd like you to check it on at Bayina TV, just do a little bit of it every day and before you know it, you'll have gone through the entire Qur'an and translation with me. Hope you can take part. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.